interview, we'll discuss the physical changes in ADS and how these impact the patient. My name is Catherine. I'm a neuro-ophthalmic nurse practitioner uh, in the NHS in England. I'm also an EDS patient and a supporter of EDS awareness. Welcome to section two of the first EDS nursing education course. There are 13 types of EDS and each has its specific symptoms. There are um, several common physical issues that overlap all types. So EDS is a group of connective tissue disorders. Um, because connective tissue is in every part of the body, then obviously EDS can affect multiple body systems and functions. Um, the type of EDS a patient has will usually affect specific organs, resulting in a group of similar symptom manifestations. However, it is not uncommon for symptoms to overlap between the different types. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, within each type, this uh, uh, each patient may exhibit one of the symptoms in that symptom group or all of the symptoms. Um, and of those symptoms, they, well, the most common type of EDS is hypermobile EDS. And the most common symptom that you'll see is that uh, a patient's joints, uh, instead of moving freely and stopping at a certain point, uh, will hyperextend. Now, this can be a minimal hyperextension, which um, seems uh, not to be a problem when you're young, maybe, and uh, um, a dancer or a gymnast, or simply uh, you'll see people doing their party tricks, uh, <laughs> so bending their thumb back to meet their forearm. But uh, in other people, it is a huge problem. Uh, the, the, the joint can move back until it subluxes or dislocates, causing an, an extraordinary amount of pain. Um, and even people who are slightly hypermobile, over years um, of hyperextension, you can have a lot of arthritic changes in those joints. In hypermobile EDS, the, the joints are uh, very lax. Um, in this particular case, uh, this person has a laxity of the knee joints. They do bow backwards, um, which you could see you can see somewhat in this photo, but uh, better in a side view. Um, she has also experienced uh, multiple dislocations of the right ankle medially, um, which have resulted in sprains, uh, strains, and um, fractures of the lower leg. Um, and you can see that um, it has caused um, sort of a, a, a mild deformity of the lower leg. She also has flat feet, which is a common um, symptom. Uh, and on the outer edges of the foot, you can sort of see in this photo some pisogenic pedal papules, which um, they're more common in classical EDS, but like I said, some of the symptoms can overlap. And what happens is the connective tissue of the feet um, should be holding the fat pads of the feet, which everyone has, um, should be holding the fat pads of the feet, which everyone has, in place. Um, but in this particular patient, they don't. So she has a lot of pain in walking and has had multiple injuries because of ankle dislocations. Musculoskeletal issues in hypermobile EDS are a direct result of the joint instability. Uh, the most common symptom that you'll probably see is pain. Um, Secondly, you can, ha you can see a lot of fatigue from the pain. You can also see falls, clumsiness, joint injuries, um, all having to do with the instability of the joint. Um, you may also see patients with spinal curvatures and disc problems. Again, the, the major symptom being pain and the, the pain on the person's life. The long tract of hypermobility is that the joint actually becomes arthritic. So whether you have a slightly hypermobile joint or an extremely hypermobile joint, uh, they may in fact be quite painful, and especially later in life when um, the, the joint becomes arthritic, uh, that it can also be very painful. Um, I have certain joints that um, uh, were once extremely flexible, um, and I would have scored far higher on the bite and the button scale when I was younger, um, but now maybe score a four or five. But that is because uh, those joints have now uh, become less uh, flexible and more painful. The symptoms that you may encounter uh, may involve uh, very loose or stretchy skin or very elastic and stretchy skin, um, some velvety soft skin, which sounds great, but it can be very fragile, can bruise easily, be prone to tears. Sutures may not hold uh, some. Um, I personally have had uh, you know, reactions to staples, inflammatory reactions to staples. Um, uh, some people scar 
in a way that's called a cigarette paper scar because of the appearance. Those of EDS may experience symptoms related to dysautonomia. This is a malfunction of the autonomic nervous system. Um, just a quick revision, the nervous system is divided into the central and peripheral systems. Peripheral system is subdivided into uh, autonomic and somatic. Um, the autonomic nervous system is further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic. It's the autonomic nervous system that is affected in dysautonomia. So your um, sympathetic and parasympathetic, which many people know as the fight or flight or rest and digest systems, um, dysfunction. So you may have... Um, uh, a sympathetic response when you don't need one. So um, just to review, the sympathetic responses uh, are fight or flight. It's something you, um, your body needs to do to say run away from a threat. So you'll have a decrease in digestion, you'll have dilated bronchioles, glucose gets released, heart rate goes up, BP goes up, your visceral blood vessels are, BP goes up, your visceral blood vessels are constricted, Salivary glands and lacrimal glands decrease, so you get a dry mouth, maybe dry eyes. Your pupils will dilate. Um, your distance vision improves, um, and you secrete epinephrine, norepinephrine, and your sweat glands are stimulated. Your urinary, um, your bladder sphincter um, constricts because this is not the time to pee. Um, and uh, in the parasympathetic system, it's just the opposite. You have increased digestion, constricted bronchioles, bladder sphincter relaxes, your heart rate slows, um, basically um, you're, you're, you have a, a, an increase in tears, saliva, uh, your constrictor muscles in your eyes are stimulated, so your eyes are able to constrict, your pupils are able to constrict, your close vision becomes sharper, and you just relax in general. So hence the, um, the term uh, rest and digest. So again, in dysautonomia, this is... Um, this is dysfunctioning. So your temperature regulatory systems may be off, your uh, fight or flight system may be off, you can have an alteration in your baroreceptor function, um, and uh, this can be extremely disruptive to a person's life. Dysautonomia is usually neuropathic in nature, um, usually from nerve damage. However, in the case of EDS, um, it's um, uh, an overactivity of the um, autonomic nervous system, so it's secondary due to the EDS. Um, one common type of dysautonomia is known as POTS, or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. This can be a very debilitating syndrome, um, and it occurs when the patient simply stands up. Um, being upright causes uh, an extreme increase in the heart rate. Um, you can also have orthostatic changes in the blood pressure, and this obviously causes a great deal of anxiety to someone who experiences this. Some of the symptoms that you might see uh, in a patient with POTS are uh, obviously the um, increase in heart rate, which may or may not be accompanied by chest pain or palpitations. Sometimes there's an orthostatic change in the BP. Uh, people complain of fatigue, of uh, brain fog, of um, balance issues, proprioception issues, um, also craving fluids and salt, uh, which is uh, um, part of um, the treatment for POTS. Um, uh, they may be always freezing uh, or overheating too quickly, have frequency of urination. Um, they may have uh, changes uh, in their lower legs, like a pooling of blood, so a, a purpley red color. Um, patients uh, with POTS um, have said that some of the things that help them are to have something, uh, a seat nearby, obviously, if they need to sit down, um, such as in the shower. Um, when they have brain fog and um, just generally comfy chairs and things that uh, can recline so they can get up slowly. Um, uh, lots of pillows help. Um, lots of fluids and electrolyte drinks often come in handy. Um, uh, wedge pillows, pregnancy pillows, weighted blankets seem to help some people. Um, and basically just taking it slowly so that you're not the one thing you did not want to do, another nurses should be aware of is something called mast cell activation syndrome, which is a type of mast cell activation disorder. This is something that EDS patients uh, um, can ha and often have. Um, this uh, includes anything from uh, mild to extreme severe allergic reactions uh, that occur inappropriately. So within your body, uh, mast cells are 
basically the, the allergy cells. Um, and then you have an allergy antibody called IgG, which is present on the mast cell, on the surface of the mast cell. That binds to an allergen, which activates chemical mediators, which promote the allergic response. Um, uh, you may see patients on antihistamines or um, histamine type 2 uh, blockers like ranitidine. Um, there is a medicine, I believe, that can block the IgG from binding to the receptor to then decrease the mast cell activity. Um, but this, this disorder uh, is important and um, uh, deserves its own course. So we'll be doing something later on, on mast cell activation. One dysautonomia that accompanies EDS uh, can be the GI issues. Um, some people experience a slowing of the GI tract, difficulty swallowing, constipation, and in severe cases, gastroparesis. Other people um, feel like they have hypermotility and um, have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, and um, even nutritional issues like malabsorption. Um, uh, some people follow um, the FODMAP diet or the exclusion diet to try to find out um, uh, exactly which uh, foods or which chemicals uh, within foods are actually uh, causing some of the problem or can um, just decrease some of the symptoms. Obviously, this is uh, something that impacts people on a daily basis and uh, when severe can be life-threatening. Circulatory can occur with EDS, especially with vascular EDS, um, are organ prolapse and aortic dissection, obviously, which are very serious and can even be deadly. Um, some types of EDS uh, um, have accompanying mitral valve prolapse. This is when the mitral valve is floppy and can lead to mitral regurgitation. Uh, this can be diagnosed via... Cognitive symptoms include brain fog, feeling fuzzy, not being able to concentrate properly, proprioception issues, bumping into things, feeling clumsy, headaches, uh, sometimes migraines, although persistent uh, headaches or... A uh, sudden severe headache should always be reported to the doctor and investigated. Blurred vision, um, again, which should always be investigated. And extreme fatigue, no matter how much sleep they get. Complaints um, from patients with EDS is pain. Um, this may be joint pain due to the hyperextension and damage that occurs to the joints, but it can also be overall body pain. This occurs because the muscles are trying very hard to keep the body uh, in good alignment. Um, and so you end up with a, a general uh, overall uh, muscle ache. Uh, this can affect your sleep. Um, patients can have pain simply when they're lying in bed, uh, not just from the muscle aches, but because the joints can actually sublux during sleep. Um, so uh, as a nursing um, measure, you may want to um, offer them extra pillows uh, offer them whatever they need to keep themselves in proper alignment uh, to decrease the pain. Patients say from EDS or accompanying dysautonomia can be exacerbated by any of the following things. Uh, dehydration, obviously, um, illness, alcohol, caffeine, certain medications, and temperature extremes. This becomes extremely important to the nurse taking care of a patient with EDS because they are obviously already in the hospital or um, they are seeing them in the community uh, because of an illness. Um, so you can expect um, uh, a more unstable presentation of a uh, patient's symptoms. Just some of the physical changes that you may see in a patient with EDS um, are hypermobility. Uh, the accompanying, accompanying symptoms may be joint pain, injury, sleep disturbance, mobility issues. Uh, they may also have skin fragility and bruising, uh, sometimes bleeding disorders. They may present with dysautonomia, you may present with POTS, mast cell activation disorder, GI issues, uh, cognitive issues and brain fog, and chronic pain. Thank you.